All right, so the reason we're learning all of this is because we want to learn about circuits. And we're actually going to have a whole chapter on direct current circuits in a, in a little bit. But we're going to introduce roughly what happens. So you're going to be eventually drawing circuit diagrams where you're basically sketching what the circuit looks like. Um, usually this is a circuit diagram is a way of, of designing the circuit. It doesn't look physically like the circuit so much. Different symbols for capacitors, um, parallel plate capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, and um, a variable capacitor. Variable ca capacitors are great, like the one with the turning plates. That can change the capacitance, so that's a variable capacitor. Um, you'll find out later that you can, um, that a lot of the things that, for instance, pick up frequencies like radios, um, you uh, you want to be able to tune the frequency that you pick up, you can use a variable capacitor to, do, to change the natural frequency of the circuit. Okay, so when we have a circuit, we're gonna have some type of voltage source, and then there is current that can travel through, so we'll get later to you know, ideal wires and such, but we're gonna assume that there's no resistance in the wire. Um, and we want to calculate the effective capacitance. Now, there's two different, um, there are two different um, ways that you can set up capacitors. Um, but that will, two simple ways, in parallel or in series. In series means one after another. So this particular figure shows capacitors in series. When you have capacitors in series, um, then you add the, um, you have to add the inverses of the capacitances. So the charge on every single capacitor is the same, um, but when you add a capacitor in series, one over the effective capacitance is equal to the sum of the inverses of the capacitance the inverses of the capacitances. So, like this. And if you had more, it would go on and on and on. Okay, another way that you can arrange capacitors is in parallel. That means that any current coming from the battery has, has the, um, is gonna travel equally, well, can get to each of the different capacitors equally as easily because the wires are ideal and nothing is stopping it. So when you have capacitances in parallel, um, first of all, the capacitance is sum. So the effective capacitance of this circuit is the sum of the capacitances. And the total charge is the sum of the charges on each plate. So these capacitors are in parallel um, because they the, the current must go to, it can go to each of them equally as easily. In contrast, to go back to this one, it's in series because if you have current, it has to travel from, from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So this is, configuration has them in series, one after another. And this configuration has them in parallel um, because current can be going through them all at the same time. Okay, so we have a set of problems that you will have where you are calculating the effective capacitance um, and later effective resistance of a circuit. So the way that you do this class of problems is to combine the easiest one and then move on and combine the next easiest one and combine the next easiest one. Um, and I find it very useful to draw an intermediate circuit. So if we first co combine the these two capacitances, they are in um, they are in series. So this C S is equal to 1 over 1 over 
C1 plus 1 over C2. Um, so that is the value of Cs. And then you can redraw the circuit, and you have replaced these two capacitors by one capacitor with a different, um, with a different capacitance. Now, this diagram B, this, di this is not a circuit that exists, but it helps you simplify it so you can see what's going on in the circuit. And now, in diagram B, you have two capacitors which are in parallel. Capacitors in parallel have an effective capacitance uh, equal to the sum of the capacitances. So you replace these two capacitors by a single capacitor with a total capacitance, capacitance of Cs plus C3. Now, that capacitance is going to be equal to 1 over C1 plus, or, sorry, 1 over 1 over C1 plus, let me just start that over again. Um, this C total is going to be 1 over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, all plus C3. So that is C tote. So often in the solution, the different pictures for the circuits are not explicitly drawn because that's a lot of drawing and it's often hard to get drawings into solutions. So we'll be a little lazy, but it is very helpful when, especially when you're learning how to um, combine circuit elements and draw new effective circuits, if you actually draw circuits just like shown in this diagram. Okay, so then, this is another one. You have two capacitors um, in parallel, and you're going to replace these by an effective capacitance of C1 plus C2. And then you have that capacitor in series with C, or sorry, C2 plus C3, and that capacitor is in series with C1. So you can replace that. So the way you draw a volt, a, a, a voltage source is like this. And then we're going to have one effective capacitor. And our, and this has capacitance C effective and C effective is the inverse of the sum of 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus C3. OK. So there are three different configurations here. We're going to break these into parts. So I'm going to do A first. And we are going to first combine the two capacitors that are in parallel. Capacitances in parallel sum. So we can rewrite our circuit as, or our circuit our snippet of our circuit. We're not touching C1 in this step. So we've got C1 and C2 plus C3. Okay, so now we have, so we've gone from having a, um, a circuit with three capacitors to a circuit with two capacitors. Now we're going to look at in our as our last step. We are going to combine the last two capacitors, and this is going to be the total effective capacitors in series have their inverses add. So we are going to add one over C1 plus one over C2 plus C3. All of that inverse, and then this is our total effective capacitor. All right, let's move along to B. The first two 
the easiest two capacitors to add are these two. So we're going to start there and we're going to redraw our little snippet of our circuit. And we have, we're going to draw this circuit. And this, we're leaving C1 alone, so this is still C1. And then these capacitances add an inverse. So we have C2 inverse plus C1, or sorry, plus C3 inverse, and we need the inverse of all of that. That is our effective capacitance. Now we have a circuit with two capacitors in parallel, so we can replace this snippet of the circuit by one effective capacitor and the capacitances of our two capacitors from the previous steps add. And this drops a minus one. Okay. Ah, it actually looks like Sometimes the writing doesn't always get transmitted. All right, so that is B, and our final answer for B is this mess. C is a little bit trickier. So we have two pairs of capacitors that are in parallel with each other. So I'm actually, in the first step, I'm going to combine two sets of two capacitors. So we are going to make, um, let's see, I should try to keep it rotated the same way so I don't make it more confusing than it already is. So we're going to make a circuit which looks like this. And this, uh, I don't want to run out of room, so I'm actually going to write it above. Um, so this capacitance is C1 plus C2, because when capacitors are in parallel, their capacitances add. And so this capacitance is C3 plus C4. Um, so I did two steps at once. Um, when you're getting started, you make a judgment call. You want to add one. To, if you're comfortable jumping two steps at once, fantastic. By the time you've done about 45 of these problems, you'll be able to do it in your sleep. All right. And then we have to, for the next and final step, we're going to combine these two capacitances into one effective capacitance. Capacitors in series have their capacitances add an inverse. So we have 1 over C1 plus C2 plus 1 over C3 plus C4, and the inverse of all of that. And this is our final answer. And you can come up with extremely tricky and complicated sets of configurations of capacitors. Um, the basic idea is always the same. You want to iteratively combine circuit elements and slowly make it simpler and simpler. And I actually would recommend, even if you can do some of it in your head, get in the habit of drawing things out meticulously and following steps in a detailed way. Because when you are meticulous, you're going to make fewer mistakes. And if you have an 18-step problem, if you make one mistake, the whole thing is wrong. Um, so be meticulous and teach yourself how to do it very carefully. Also, because while you're working on these simpler problems, this is the time to protect, to, to develop your technique for problem solving and start to do things in a way so that it's harder to make dumb mistakes because we all make dumb mistakes. Rather, not just make it, make it harder to make dumb mistakes, but make it easier. Work on your ways of catching your dumb mistakes. All right.